Good morning guys, it's Stephen here from James Glenn Car Sales with another episode of Random Candid Car Review. This time, I've had a wee sneaky peek. Let me show you what the guys have set out. I think you're going to be rather impressed. Not our usual type of stock, I have to say. However, it does not make it any less special. In fact, I'd probably say it makes it even more special. So to the uninitiated, this looks basically like an old Honda Accord, but those of you who have got a keener eye will realize that this is the import only GDM Honda Accord Euro R. This car features um, 2.2 VTEC engine, otherwise known as the H22. Uh, I do believe in this car it's hand built. It comes with a limited slip differential and it's also lighter than the standard car. Other things, um, it's got a really cool set of Recaro seats, the same seats that you would find in a Mitsubishi Evo 5 or Evo 6. Um, it's got arch extensions. It also has a nice spoiler on the back and a lip kit. Um, so let's get a look around and just see just how this car presents on the camera. I have to say I'm absolutely loving the amber indicators. Uh, these wheels, they aren't silver. It's almost like a, it's almost like a kind of slight rose gold. Uh, the colour is amazing. Now, I have, to, I have to point out, this car has not been detailed yet. Um, it's been to Performance Tech Racing in Glasgow who have worked on Hondas longer than anybody uh, that I know of. Uh, I will put a link in the description below. Um, so any Honda requirements, they also uh, do race, uh, race car prep primarily um, for minis. So yes, let's get back to this Euro R before we get sidetracked into talking about minis and track cars and things. So uh, look at that stance, guys. I mean, check, I mean this car, it's on a set of uh, Tyne coilovers, but it's not lowered to death. It's got a crack and ride height. It rides really good. I've had this car out uh, for a good drive on several occasions, um, and I, I genuinely couldn't believe just how, how good it is. So that's the car on the outside. Mm, oh, I need to show you the inside, don't I? So not really a great deal to see because it is like full on 90s in here. Um, but I'll give you a quick peek. As I mentioned, it's got these lovely Recaros. This one does also have a lowered seat base. Uh, we've got a wee bit of wear there, but this is a 20 year old car. Steering wheel's a great size. Uh, love the light colored faces. It's just a shame the center one isn't a rev counter. But other than that, it's quite a nice place to be. So let me go and <coughs> get the GoPro strapped on the windscreen and we'll get it out and we'll see what she's like. Guys, we are now out on the road in the Euro R. Got a bit of temperature into the engine oil because a bit of mechanical stuff that goes a long way, as we all know. Um, so we've got a wee slow section here just going through uh, this wee village and then we're out into a national speed limit. And um, first and foremost, let's see how fast it is. Now, don't get your hopes up because it sounds like it's going fast, but it's not really. But I have to say, I am a big believer in it's how you feel in the car when it's trying to go fast rather than the outright speed. Um, especially living in the UK where we've got a relentless war on speed. So what have we got? We've got a red line at 7,200 RPM. We've got a fairly uh, closely stacked five speed uh, manual gearbox. Um, it is worth noting that this is, I don't know if it's a, just a spoon gear knob or a, or a spoon short shift that's in this, but the shift is like really, really, really tight, dead precise, the clutch is nice and light. Um, seat position is lower because we are on a Recaro, but it's got a lowered seat base. That being said, if, if it was my car, I'd have to buy a lowered seat base for the passenger seat as well, because when you look in through the window, the, the headrest don't sit totally level, and that would set me off. Um, moving on from the seats, 
pretty plain cabin. There's not really a lot going on. One of the previous owners has upgraded the infotainment, so we've got quite a nice touchscreen Pioneer system with Bluetooth, does Apple CarPlay and all that kind of stuff. But the main reason for being out in the Euro R is none of this. This is just all baubles. We are out in this car to see what it's like to drive. So we're now sorting our way up a wee bit of speed. That's us in a 40, we've been in 60 just very, very soon. And I really, really hope that the, the microphone picks up. Oh, of course, the other side. Uh, the mics pick up the induction noise off this old car. We've got an intake, we've got an exhaust. Um, so it does sound rather fruity. Here we go, so we'll slow down a wee bit. Get it down into second gear. Give it the beans. That's five and a half. Oh, you better have a limit there. Now, okay, so we have identified that it loves to rev. Doesn't rev like the B16s and the B18s. Um, that being said, this car's actually got some mid-range, which is nice. Not lots of it, but it does uh, actually do something when you accelerate out of VTEC, unlike the, the smaller VTEC engines. So we're coming up to a big long sweeper here, and let's just see if we can feel that diff. Um, to get the diff working properly, I really do need to get it singing. So we'll do that. And what I've, what I've found, but my limited experience is limited slip diffs work best in, in like high torque applications. So if you've got like a, a boosted car and, and you feel the, the, the torque ramping up, you really start to feel the diff working. It's very, very subtle in this car because obviously we've got limited torque available. <laughs> That's fine though. Uh, brakes are really, really good. This car's got EBC yellow stuff pads new discs, new pads, new calipers. So I would imagine these brakes are as good as they're going to be in a Euro R. Um, I have been out of replay in this car um, and I've gave the brakes some stick and I'm very impressed, very impressed. That's probably a mixture of the fresh brake components and the, and the fact that the car's really, really light as well. Um, I'm not sure exactly what the, what the weight is, but I will find out and I'll put it in the description below because that's, as I say, that's probably one of the reasons why the car rides and stops as well as it does. So we'll do a wee stand and start test once we let that traffic up ahead clear off. It is raining today, but that being said, we're on a Uniroyal Rain Sport 5 tyre. Good test for it. There we go. It wasn't even 100 kilometers an hour, it wasn't even 60, but it sounds like you're going so much quicker. We're on a set of time coil, time coil, we're on a set of time coilovers on this car. Uh, not set offensively low, so it does ride the bumps nice. We've also got quite a big tyre on the car as well, um, which helps. The steering feels, you do feel a lot, you really do feel, there's a wee bit of a kind of top dead centre, nothingness, just on initial turning, that could be down to age, could be down to the big tyres, could also be down to the Uniroyals because that is a very, very soft tyre carcass, uh, which allows for great wet grip, but it's not the last word um, in steering feel. But uh, just, it, I mean, yeah, probably going fast enough to get an idea of what the car handles like on a, on a Scottish B road and I have to say it's really really good I mean this is 20 years old 20 years old and it's out here doing this and the interior as far as I can hear has got literally no creaks no squeaks and uh, she's not exactly low mileage 160,000 kilometres which will be 110,000 miles. Even although this car is an import, we have got every bit of history all stamped up right through. We were actually on 
Google Maps the other day, Googling the Honda dealer uh, in Japan that was doing the service. Anyway, back to how the car drives. We're on a wee bit of a tighter twister section here. Feel the diff working much, much, much more there. More steering input. went a bit steamy outside not the car so this is a wee bit more of a tighter technical section of the road now, as you can probably imagine we've got no traction control but ABS so you just need to make sure you don't go too hot into a corner it just loves being thrashed it really really does play crest I'm quite sure it's over the other end so give it a wee we're off some speed here. Uh, we're clear. You can just hear that VTEC crossover. It's in these, it's mechanical. And in the newer iVTEC, it's, I'm not quite sure. Obviously, iVTEC, there must be some sort of electronic control in there rather than it just being mechanical. Oh, wait a second. Just when you think it's going to understeer, the diff starts to pull around. It's absolutely wicked. Whoop! Right here, there. Yeah, but the, the VTEC crossover on these end, older engines is so much more crispy, so much more satisfying. I mean, ultimately, it's probably not as fast, but I was saying earlier, it's about how the car feels when you are trying to go fast. So just slowing it down a wee bit and just driving the car a bit less like a hooligan and you know, a wee bit more like what you would do if you had passengers in the car. It's still really satisfying. I mean, you've got this lovely rifle bolt action gearbox to use because it's the H22. It does still send you along the road at a, re at a reasonable rate of knots because we've actually got some torque to use. Yeah, it's hard to believe it's 20 years old. It really is. One more cent. What this car must be like on a dry day on something like a Yokohama 808R or like a tyre from Michelin shocky stiffened up a wee bit because it feels like it's quite soft and then you look behind and you're in a you're in a you're in a saloon car it's uh, <laughs> this has probably made me smile more than a lot of the newer cars that I've reviewed recently and then you've also got the values I mean get one of these while you can anything old cool fast remotely rare is is already worth a lot of money and they're never going to come back down again they just aren't because the demand is never going to stop but the supply of cars is constantly going to dwindle people are going to crash them people are not going to look after them they're going to rust away to nothing so if you've got a, if you've got the opportunity of a good car with good history, it's not orange underneath. Go buy it and enjoy it, guys. If you've enjoyed this video, I would love for you to subscribe to the channel. Uh, I put out a car review every week. It can be anything from a twenty-year-old Honda to a Jaguar F-Type to a Golf R, and basically everything in between. If there's anything in the video that you've seen that you've disagreed with, or if you've agreed with it wholeheartedly and you want to chat about it, leave it in the comments below. We always reply to comments. Uh, as I say, I do a video like this every week. So I will see you next Friday. Thanks, guys, and appreciate you making it all the way to the end.